going live here on Facebook with all our friends and family. We're not able to gather, and I feel really sad about that. <laughs> it's really getting to me now, this lockdown. And maybe soon the government will release us from lockdown and we'll be able to gather. Maybe I will have to safe distance for a few months to come yet. But I'm looking forward to that day. But in the meantime, we're gathering on the internet. We're gathering all over the world. People are doing this all over the world, you know, having live services. And so this morning, I want us to praise and worship the Lord together. I want us to pray. I want us to hear God's word. And let God speak to us through his word. And we've got a, a lovely message for you. And I want you to be able to get a pen and paper. Take notes so that you can practice spreading this message to your friends and your family as well. Especially when the lockdown's over. This is training time. <laughs> it's for us to get ready to go out into all the world and take the good news to all creation. So as we've gathered, let's bow our heads for a few moments of prayer. Heavenly Father, I just uh, pray for all our families and friends all over the world, our brothers and sisters in Christ. For those of us, Lord, who can't gather together, even though we want to. Father, we know that you are with us. You promise to be with us wherever we go, with us to the end of time. And so, Lord, we come to you afresh today, and we pray that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we can really worship you in spirit and in truth today. We pray, Father, that you'd open up our hearts afresh to you. Lord, that you would speak to us through your word, through the message, through the songs. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the grace, the mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And the people normally respond when the church is full and also with you. <laughs> and then we say, this is the day that the Lord has made. And the people respond, let us rejoice and be glad in it. So say that at home. Turn to your family and your friends and you say it to them. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. <laughs> Today we're going to worship the Lord and uh, our camera person is going to shine it on the screen and uh, you're going to see the words, hopefully.
into the Lord's presence. Let's just reflect upon our lives and what our lives have been like. You know, we've not been able to go anywhere or do anything, so the likelihood is that uh, you've been sinful is pretty remote. <laughs> but we can be sinful in all kinds of different ways. And so I just want us to take a few moments. Maybe if you're, you're with family and friends, just close your eyes, wherever you are, take a few moments to reflect on your life. And we're going to have a time where we can confess anything that we know is between us and God. Let's do that. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these, and upon these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, we remember the Bible promises that when we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You see, God doesn't just say, okay, you're forgiven. He wants us to know and to experience his forgiveness in our inner being. So when you say sorry to God, he comes and does something. He makes you feel clean on the inside. God bless you folks as you confess and get right with God. We're going to continue to worship him now. And I'll just ask the camera person to position themselves as we sing another song to the Lord.
that standing in the righteousness of Christ is part of our message today and it's a righteousness that God imparts to us it's not something that we can work up and attain by ourselves if that were possible then Christ would never have needed to come into this world and to die upon the cross and so God wants us to be righteous in Jesus but he makes it possible for that to happen and we're going to hear that today the main message of the Lord Jesus Christ but before we do that we're going to hear the Bible being read and uh, we'll get ready today's Bible reading comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verses 17 to 21 therefore if anyone is in Christ he is a new creation the old has gone the new has come all this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ and not counting men's sins against them and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation we are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us we implore you on Christ's behalf be reconciled to God God made him who knew who had no sin to become sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Our second reading, the gospel reading, is taken from Matthew's gospel, uh, chapter 9, verses 14 to 17. Then John's disciples came to Jesus and asked him, how is it that we and the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? Jesus answered them, How can the guests of the bridegroom mourn while he is with them? The time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them. Then they will fast. No one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch will pull away from the garment making the tear worse. Neither do men pour new wine into old wineskins. If they do, the skins will burst. The wine will run out, and the wineskins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wineskins, and both are preserved. This is the Gospel of Christ. The old and the new. The new and the old. <laughs> It's a thing that's repeated throughout the Bible, and you've heard two readings from the Bible where old and new are mentioned. And this is one of Jesus' parables, and it's a parable that is quite often missed, because it's only two verses <laughs> out of a, another chapter, and it's embedded right in the middle of a chapter in Matthew, and you think, is that a parable? It's so short, how can that be a parable? But Jesus spoke many, many parables uh, to us. And we're going to go through a series of talks on the parables so that you can understand the message of Jesus, the kingdom message. And uh, you'll see that there's a progression in the parables when you follow them through chronologically. And uh, you can see Jesus had a message right from the start of his ministry. He had a plan to communicate the message of the kingdom of heaven to us so that we can know not just uh, God's uh, plan for us but also how to live for God in this world with the Lord Jesus Christ now look, the first part of that uh, parable was this I know <laughs> you cannot put a, a new patch on an old garment <laughs> and if you do, something weird is going to happen. Now, you all know it. I, I don't know if you're like me. I'm a man. Um, and men may be prone to this. We don't like to throw things away. <laughs> you know, I had an old jacket once. I got it when I was 18 years old. And I wore that thing until it was threadbare. And uh, one day I came home and I was looking for my jacket. I love wearing the jacket. Even though it was threadbare, I love to wear it. It made me feel good. It was made of soft material, it was green, my favourite colour. 
And I put that garment on uh, all the time. I came home one day and I said to Julie, where's my jacket? She said, you mean that old rag? <laughs> I said, yeah. She said, I threw it in the bin. I said, no, <laughs> that's my favorite jacket. And so I went to the bin and I got my jacket out. I thought, well, I have to wash this now. <laughs> so we washed my old threadbare jacket and I put it on once it came out the tumble dry and I thought, I'm home. <laughs> Men love old clothes. And so we very rarely chuck them away. And maybe when Jesus was telling his message, maybe people in those days even had a habit of mending old clothes and making do until there was nothing left of them. Well, Jesus said, if you've got an old garment, don't sew a new patch on it because that old garment will be ruined if you do. And then he told us another story. He said you can't put new you can't put new wine in an old wineskin. <laughs> Now, I love making wine. Have you ever made wine? It's one of the best hobbies you can get. <laughs> you see fruit turning from sugary syrup into a beautiful liquid that you can have with a meal. And have nothing better than a glass of uh, ruby red blackberry wine. Oh, it's so savory, beautiful. You know, once I, I bottled it too early, before it had finished fermenting, and had all the bottles lined up on a shelf in our pantry. All the food was underneath and all the bottles were lined up in the, on the shelf in the pantry. Lying on their side, of course, uh, because we want all the sediment, if there's any, to fall to the cork. <laughs> anyway, weeks and weeks, I forgot all about them. Weeks and weeks went by. And Julie and I were sitting in the front room one night and we heard, pop, pop. I said, what's that? And so... We went to the kitchen, looked around everywhere in the kitchen, couldn't see anything. Finally, we opened the pantry door and it was purple. <laughs> These bottles had exploded. The cork had come flying out. And so we took the two bottles that were left over and we put them into the fridge. Again, we forgot about them for months. And then one day we picked up one of those bottles and said, look, this bottle, shall we open it? So we opened it, poured it out with sparkling blackberry wine best wine I've ever tasted. It was made by accident. <laughs> and sometimes, but this is really to bring home that story. If you put new wine, new wine into an old wineskin, the wineskin is going to burst. The wineskin is going to burst. And then the, the wine and the skin will both be ruined. Now what was Jesus saying in these two little parables? What was Jesus really saying? He was saying, the disciples had come to him, the disciples of John the Baptist, they were used to fasting. And they said, you know, why aren't your disciples fasting? Why aren't your disciples fasting? It's part of our religion. <laughs> and the Pharisees, they all fast. Your disciples aren't fasting. They're not doing it right, basically. And Jesus said, oh, no. They say, how can they fast when the bridegroom is with them? Jesus, the creator of the universe, was with them. How can they fast and mourn while he's with them? And he said this, one day the bridegroom will be taken from them. Then they will fast. Then they will mourn, another scripture says. You know, sometimes people who are religious don't understand the freedom that Christ brings. And this is what Jesus was really saying when he gave this message. He says, look, the Old Testament is gone. I'm bringing something completely new, completely revolutionary. It's like a new religion. It's following on from your religion to the Jews. And it's completing your religion. But it is completely different. And you can't put that which is new in with the old. <laughs> if you try and attach my message my kingdom message to the old it will be of no value it will be like pouring good new wine into an old wineskin and it will be ruined you know there's another part of the bible that was read out to us today from second corinthians 
chapter 5, uh, beginning at verse 17. And that was talking about something new. And uh, I'll just get it here. It says uh, in our Bible, you are a new... A new creation when you come to faith in Christ Jesus. So it's in Christ. But it also says the old has gone. <laughs> so the old has gone. It's no more. <laughs> the old way of doing things, the old religion, everything religious is completely gone. It says you're a new creation in in Christ. And what that really is saying is that religion doesn't come into it. It's about relationship. When you get into that relationship with Jesus, you're a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. And it goes on from there. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us a ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ not counting men's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. Now you notice what Jesus, what the, the Bible doesn't say there. It doesn't say that we'll be forgiven for our sins if we do this or we do that. It's God who forgives us, not <coughs> counting men's sins against them when they trust in Christ. And so this message is talking about a new kind of thing. We get a new identity when we come to Jesus. We're completely different from the, the old self that we used to be. And it's through faith and trust in Jesus and his death upon the cross, of course, we ask for his forgiveness and we repent and we come to faith and trust in Jesus. The Bible tells us when we do that, we are made something. <laughs> and it's wonderful when this happens. I don't know if it's happened to you yet, but if it does, you'll know about it because you'll begin to do this. You'll begin to smile, <laughs> not just on the outside, but on the, on the inside. And you'll begin to glow. You are a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. This is the new identity you get when you come to Jesus Christ. So you're made new. But something else happens too. And this is what Jesus actually gives us. It gives us a purpose for being. It's not just he makes you new and then that's it. You know, you just sit back being new. Like, like one of those toys on the shelf that you buy brand new and never touch again. No! <laughs> that's not what Christianity is about. God creates us for a wonderful purpose. And it's for this reason that Jesus sends us. That's, of course, a, a map of the world. <laughs> you can tell by my artistic skills. <laughs> now, Jesus says, listen to the, the words from the Bible itself, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ. God wants the world to be reconciled to himself. And so, he commits us to go to the world with a message of reconciliation. So he gives you and me and every believer in Christ a purpose. It's a new identity. It makes you new, but it gives you a new purpose in life to go into all the world. And this is why Jesus ministered. When he said you can't sow a new patch on an old garment. You can't put new wine in an old wineskin. You have to be made new. And then the old will go and the new will come. And then he gives you a wonderful life to be able to take that message to the rest of the world. It's as though God was making his appeal to the world through us. You are God's... You are God's ambassador. He sends you as his ambassador, his representative 
to the world. So when the world sees you, it sees Christ's ambassador. Now you know ambassadors are very, very important people. When the Queen sends an ambassador over to a foreign country, they get all the pomp and ceremony that was due to them, that would have been due to the Queen if she had arrived. The Queen's ambassador is treated as royalty. And when he speaks, he speaks on the Queen's behalf. And foreign dignitaries and world leaders, they listen because that ambassador is speaking for the Queen. When you go into all the world with Christ in you, when you're in Christ and he's in you, you are Christ's representative to the world. And so we have a very important mission. You see, God loved the world so much. That's why he sent Jesus to die on the cross. That message should really impact every true believer. If you're in Christ, then God has got a ministry for you to take that message of reconciliation back to your world. Now, how do we do that? <laughs> well, that's what discipleship is all about. And, and we're following through on that. We want to train disciples. We don't want people just to get converted and sit at home and enjoy Jesus' pleasure. That's wonderful. <laughs> but God's got so much more that he wants us to be doing in this world to change the world. And he says, you'll be like a light. Yeah, you Let your good deeds be known and let your light shine before men that they may glorify your Father in heaven. Take the message of God's love to the whole world. Have you been made new? <laughs> That's the message really for today. It says, if you are in Christ, if anyone is in Christ, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, if you're not in Christ, then you probably don't want to go to the world. You probably don't even feel new. But if you're in Christ, you'll know that something inside you is different. And he's given you a desire now, not an ability, a natural ability, but a desire to be obedient to what God is telling you to do. If you're a real Christian. You see, you share God's heart for the whole world. Now, if you don't feel able to do any of this, to go into the world and spread that message of good news, then you're in a good place. You join 98% of Christians all over the world. But that's what we believe we're here for, to train people, to show them, to model for them how to go into all the world. During this lockdown time, I want you to consider very carefully, am I doing what God wants me to do? Ask yourself that question. If you're not, all you have to do is say, forgive me, Father. And he'll give you a brand new start right today. Right from that moment that you ask for that forgiveness. Are you ready to be Christ's ambassador to this world? Let us pray. Father, I want to thank you uh, for all the teachings that we see in the, the Bible, both the Old and the New Testament about old things and new things, about how you're the God of possibilities. You take things that are old and worn out <laughs> and you can transform them, Lord, and make them beautiful again. But Lord, you don't want us to do it through religion. You want us to do it through relationship. First of all with you and then with each other and then to go out into the world. Lord, we pray that you would equip us and every Christian to really be your ambassador to this world, taking that message of reconciliation to everyone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So let's just have a, a few moments of prayer as we think about our friends and family and all those that have been affected by this coronavirus. Coronavirus is not the only thing that is a concern for people in the world today. We've had friends who've uh, just gone into hospital and had an operation uh, this week. We've got friends who are waiting on operations. And a lot of the, even the vital operations have been cancelled because of the coronavirus. And so people are waiting for things like that. 
I don't know if you're waiting on anything to happen to you. Maybe you're having a financial uh, crisis at this moment because of the coronavirus. There's all kinds of different things that are affecting people in all over the world today. So let's maybe just take a few moments. Think about the people that you know, and then we'll pray about ourselves and the difficulties that we're experiencing. Let us pray. Father, you tell us uh, in the Bible to pray for all those in authority, to pray for the leaders of the nations. And so we pray for the leaders of the nations today, Lord, that you would give them wisdom. And we pray for all their counsellors and all those that advise them. Father, that they would listen to sound advice. And we pray and continue to pray for peace amongst the nations. We pray for an end of this coronavirus. Lord, that a cure can be found. We pray for all those, Lord, that have lost their lives to this dreadful disease. And we ask, Father, that you would draw near to all those families and friends that are left behind, grieving and mourning. Draw near in the power of the Holy Spirit. Give them your comfort. Give them your strength to carry on. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, coming closer to home, we pray for our own city, the city of London. Lord, in lockdown, millions of people, and some people are in flats and they can't get out and they're getting frustrated now with children running around. Father, we continue to pray for them, that you give them peace and patience in whatever circumstance we find ourselves today. Lord, that we pray that love can flow in families. Help us, Lord, to forgive each other, for we're bound to get on each other's nerves. <laughs> and we pray that you'd help all families and friends to forgive each other quickly and from the heart. Lord, we thank you for the love that you have shown to each and every one of us in forgiving us, cleansing us and making us new in Jesus. And so we bring to you, Heavenly Father, all those things that are a concern for us today. You might want to just have a few moments to think of anything that's a concern for you. So, Father, we thank you for that amazing promise that when we ask, we shall receive. When we seek, we will find. And when we knock, the door will be opened. For all of these things, Father, we appeal to you. We come to you. We ask you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In a few moments, we're going to uh, pray the Lord's Prayer. And I'll be reading it out from our, our service sheet <laughs> that we have here in the church. Um, and if you know the Lord's Prayer, I'd encourage you to join in with me. And so we pray to our Heavenly Father, our Father in Heaven. Remember, it's relationship, not religion. Our Father in Heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in Heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forevermore. Amen. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. You know, in church, I always say to the people, okay, God bless you. Thank you for being with us. Now get out. <laughs> and I say to them, go into all the world and spread the good news to all creation. Well, we can't do that at the moment, but we can reach out to those that we know and love with the same message of love of Jesus.
let's continue to do that as much as we can. God bless you, everyone, and thank you for being with us today.